Hello, Aquanauts. Can I just point out <laughs> that everybody has mentioned Aquardians, but I believe the poll was Aquanauts. 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 Okay, that's our name. Welcome. Thank you for coming to the stream. And um, Luis, wait, <laughs> what is this? Before I forget, we're the sw sweets and chips. <laughs> also, hi, Aquarians. <laughs> Do we need to change the name? Thank you, Luis. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. I've got a slightly different setup tonight. I've got my iPad to the left now, trying to keep the eye contact going. And um, let me just say hi, and then we'll get right into the lesson. Um, <laughs> Liam's here, Digby's here, Jonathan's here, ready for more magic stuff I don't understand to happen. <laughs> okay, well, I will do my best to explain this like I'm explaining to a five-year-old because that's how I prefer to learn. So I'll try to make this as uh, digestible and palatable as possible. Um, let's see here. Morgan. Yes, you are spoiling her. Oh, can Amy make him dance with somebody? Can she make him feel the heat with somebody? Morgan, that's a question for you. And I see you've answered it. <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, I'm not going to waste any time. Hey, buddies, guy. Aubrey's here. Aubrey, uh, I think um, I really appreciate you being here because it sounds like you could be, uh, I don't know, taking in something way more interesting tonight. But thank you for being here. <laughs> Darwin, Aquanauts, love it. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So, um, do I need to turn my sound on? I think I have my sound on. Let's just get into this, okay? I'm going to go into stream Streamlabs, and I'm going to go, we need to switch this from just this mug to, to, where am I going? I'm going to this. Okay, and I'm doing something a little bit different tonight. Let's, let's hide that um, because I've noticed I rewatched the last stream and my face is covering up like some of the more important parts of the After Effects interface. We don't need that. That makes it more difficult to learn. Do we all agree? I agree. So instead I have moved myself over and I made the screen a little bit uh, smaller so you can see everything. So hopefully that's helpful. Tonight we are making music come alive. How are we going to do this? Well, I gave myself a cheat sheet because that's a thing I need. Um, if you are brand new to this, and if you're a musician, you're probably not, but for everybody else. So there is an audio frequency spectrum, okay? And when you're, um, when you're wanting to manipulate the sound in a visual way, it can be helpful to understand what frequencies you're targeting. So I have this cheat sheet here. I just mocked this up very quickly. Um, let me uh, see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So in the bass section, we've got between 60 and 250 hertz. And then that's kind of like, you know, your bass drum, uh, like your whole drum section when you really want something to bump. Like that's the frequency that you want to target. Did I hear a sound or is that just in my brain? Let me see here. Hang on a second. I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, go down, go down, go down. Oh, you guys are moving fast tonight. I'm not, it's hard for me to keep up. Oh, hey, Resolief. Hey, Resolief. Liam, split it between tea and crisps. <laughs> Sorry, chips. Yeah, good for both. Good for both. Thank you, Liam. Appreciate it. And also thank you for, I mean, this technically is the last time you're going to be able to enjoy this and not feel sleep deprived, but thank you for being here. 
<laughs> okay. All right. So this is my this is my cheat sheet, um, and so that's all I got for that. Before we get into this, I'm gonna preview three uh, ways that I have been able to utilize this effect. And I hope you appreciate the music. I don't know. It just felt appropriate. Do I have my sound up? Let me turn my sound up a little bit so we can all hear. Okay. Um, hope it's not too loud and blasting, blasting in your ears. Yeah, it's Rick Astley and what? Okay. Never going to give you up. I don't know. It just, it just felt so on brand somehow. And I found a website, um, credit to my mom for suggesting this. There is a website called Licked. I know, I know. It's not spelled like Licked. It's a little different, but uh, Licked allows you to um, license commercial tracks that you can use, like popular commercial tracks in your YouTube content um, at a pretty affordable price. And, um, and you can still monetize any content that you use these tracks on. So I, I was like, what song could I use tonight? Oh, Rick Astley for sure. So this is example number one. Let me just, let me just. I don't know what else I'm using this song for, but. But it speaks to my soul. Okay, that's preview number one. Preview number two, I went a little bit crazy. Let's NASA enhance. Let me pull this down a little bit so we can get the full experience. This is what I did on this one. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. My, my computer is struggling a little bit. And typically when it does, um, it sounds demonic. Okay, we got a little bit more going on here. So what should be obvious is that the waveforms are perfectly synced to the beat based on the frequencies that I've set for each, for each layer. So that's example two. Example three, now you could do this with just uh, a waveform, like an audio waveform. You can also do it with objects, which is pretty cool. Let me show you what this looks like. I heard the beep. I'm getting there, hold on. Right? Like a star, you could do it for any object. Um, okay. Tom, oh Tom, I, I hope you're feeling better after the flu last week. You'll, you'll know what this is for. Off you go. Thank you very much. What are we gonna do if like there are no chips or crisps during these streams? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Oh, positivity. Positivity, thank you very much for the super sticker. Very cute. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, so those are the three examples. Now, um, we're already 10 minutes into this. Let's just get into it. Let me show you how I did this. So I have a blank slate, a blank composition. Well, it's not blank. I've added a couple things here. I've added the cheat sheet, just in case I forget. And also so that you have something to reference if you need to. And I, what else do I have in here? I have the music track and I have a background. That's it. Uh, so I'm going to hide the cheat sheet because we don't need we don't need that anymore. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to layer new solid. I'm going to make it the size of our comp um, and then we'll say OK. And the first thing we'll do is to keep it organized, we'll call this We'll call this, what should we call this? Uh, 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 Rick rolled 
brick rolled, whatever. You can call it whatever. Okay, so with this layer selected in our effects and presets window, we're, we are looking very specifically for audio spectrum. And this is something that comes pretty standard with After Effects, so you don't have to pay anything extra for this. Um, why can't I see it? Oh, I need to. I need to move some stuff around here. We don't need this. Okay, let me, there it is, Audio Spectrum. Okay, so we're gonna take this effect and we're gonna click and drag it onto Rick Rolled. Okay, and I don't know if you can tell, but if we zoom in here, uh, we have just a straight, boring line. Let's make it less boring. We're gonna click, we're gonna highlight our Rick Rolled layer. And now I might need to make this uh, preview a little bit smaller because we need to see, whoopsie, we need to see, what? I don't need guides right now. Hide them, please. I'll just clear them. Okay, we're gonna, oh my God. Don't show rulers, okay. So here's what it looks like when we apply audio spectrum to our layer. And you can see there are a number of properties here and I know it seems, ah, it's too much. What does everything do? I'll show you. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to link our audio track to this layer. So with our um, solid layer selected, we're gonna go up to, um, oh, I guess it's already, it's already chosen for us. So you would choose, choose this under audio layer and the source will be our music. So whatever music track you have in your timeline, that's where it's grabbing the data from. So we know it's going to be Rick Astley, never gonna give you up. We'll click on that and let's just see what that does. Let me move this over a little bit. Not a whole lot going on because we haven't added any kind of customization to it. So let's go to the very uh, start of our composition. And now this point here, that's where it's gonna start. And you can see that that, see the start point here? That's where it starts. So we're gonna go, these values, by the way, represent X and Y, okay? So left and right on the horizontal scale. So we're gonna move this over until it's all the way to the edge of the screen, and that's where it'll start. And now for the end point, which is this point, which I am delicately highlighting here, we're going to move this X position to the very end of the frame. Okay, what does that do? Let's play it. Okay, still not a lot happening, but um, it's covering the whole screen now. Now, how do we get creative with this? Well, the first thing that we can do is we can set our height, our maximum height, so at the, at the loudest parts, um, how high do we want it to lift? Let me show you what this does. Maximum height, if you move this, let's just go crazy just to exaggerate it a little bit. It's a little bit bigger and you can increase that even more, um, even up to 19,000. I guess that's a possibility. See how easy that is? It, that took absolutely nothing, really, just a couple clicks. Um, now, where you can get creative with this, and if you're a musician, you will understand what frequencies to target um, to make this really, really dynamic. And again, that cheat sheet uh, can be very helpful. We kind of want to see the bass section of this really like bump and move and jump around. Um, so we know that the bass section is gonna be on the lower part of the spectrum, the, uh, the audio spectrum. Um, by default, it's at 20. Uh, if we took this down all the way uh, to like one. Morgan, never gonna make you cry. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie or desert me. Please don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank 
take you, baby. Let me see. Are we all following here? I should probably figure this out before I move on. Oh, okay. Um, Tom says Chuck Norris was bitten by a rattlesnake after three days of excruciating pain and suffering. The snake died. Wow, I miss a lot when I'm when I'm trying to teach. I don't know what I missed there, but that will be very fun to revisit uh, after the stream is over. <laughs> Steve, well said, Morgan. Yes, okay. All right, so let's continue, why don't we? So what else can we do here? Let me show you. So we can add, if you look at all of these different properties, we have the start frequency, we have the end frequency, we have the number of bands. Let me show you what that does. Um, by default, it's at 64, but if we ramp this up, you see what that does? Now you've got like just a solid effect. Look at that. You know, got to season it to taste, but maybe that's something you like. Um, we can also increase the thickness and we can change the colors. So what would we like to change the color of this to? Let's, uh, let's take a, a crowd poll here. <laughs> Resolute. The mylar, I actually don't because I, I, I realize like when I wear the hat too much, um, it kind of hurts my head a little bit, makes my head a little sore. And then I've got that like helmet hair underneath. So I wear the hat um, pretty much when I'm live and sometimes when I'm out, but most of the time, nope, just everything everything on display. Yellow, okay, I'm seeing yellow, yellow. Can you cycle through the rainbow? We could do that anytime. Okay, let's go with yellow. Majority rules. So let's, let's, find, the, let's find the prettiest shade of yellow. I kind of like a warmer, not quite, um, or, not quite orange, but kind of a sunset tone. Um, we could even go a little bit harder on the yellow. Let's try that. What does that look like? No, it could be brighter. How bright? Uh, do I? Okay, I do have that. Maybe I just need to brighten it up a little bit. Um, is that an acceptable yellow for you guys? I personally, I'm going to go a little bit, just a little bit warmer, okay? And you could make different um, color choices for the inside color and the outside color. I'm just going with a solid color for this. Okay. Um, what else would be helpful to know here? Okay, so the display options. Currently, we have it set to digital, but we have two other options here. We have analog lines and analog dots. Here's what analog lines looks like. Let me take the frequency bands just down a little bit so we can maybe see what's going on a little bit better here. This is analog lines. Okay, so that's analog lines. We can also change this to analog dots, which is pretty cool. I often like to use this um, as kind of the seasoning. It's It can be nice to have it offset a little bit from the previous waveform and then lift it up. So it's almost like a border around it, but it just adds a little extra energy to it. On its own, um, just a bunch of dots, really. Uh, Saint Croc, while we're on the color top, what color would you consider the hat? Um, maroon, uh, uh burgundy, uh, not quite, not quite red. Um, a, a darker muted red. What do you think? I'm colorblind, so I don't really know what I'm wearing. Okay, so those are the three options for display. 
Now, we also have the option, let me change this back to digital. We also have the option under side options to have this affect both the A and the B, which is the top of the waveform and also the bottom of the waveform, or we can isolate it so it's just affecting the top or just affecting the bottom. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is side A. So that's just the top. Maybe you want it on the bottom. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, pretty intuitive, I think. So you can get really creative with this. You can also, um, if you're going to create multiple layers with this effect, kind of similar to what I did with the first example, um, if you're gonna do it this way, um, where was I going with that? I had a thought and it just has evaporated. What was, what was the point I was trying to make there? Um, you can stack these things to create all kinds of interesting patterns. Um, you can highlight specific fre frequencies. Um, I think I covered all of that. So that's just if you want a straight line. Now there's another way you can do this, which is pretty cool. I've seen this in, in, in other music visualizers on YouTube where um, it, they'll, they will modify it so that the spectrum um, kind of sticks to a path, like it conforms to whatever path you draw. And that's really simple to do too. And the only way uh, you can do that, maybe not the only way, but here's one way. If you select the layer that you have audio spectrum applied to, if you go up to your mask tool, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna draw a circle and I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and just make a circle, a circle. So right now, not doing much, but if we go up into our properties here, um, we can change the path. So the path is currently set to none. Let's see what, what we get with mask. So now it's wrapping around the shape and you have the option side B is okay. I kind of like side A for this. So as you can see, like making this really visually interesting just comes from stacking layers. So you could take this layer and duplicate it. That would be Command D if you're on a Mac to duplicate. And you could do something a little bit different. You could even use a different shape if you wanted to. Maybe we don't want a circle. Maybe we want a star, a square. Um, what does a square look like? Probably boring, but let's try it. Oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Bye, Tom. Oh, is Tom leaving? Tom, I are you not feeling well? I need to scroll. Hold on a second, guys. Oh, back to work. Okay. Well, thanks for coming, Tom. And um, Luis, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. I would not have known without the little beep. Okay. Yes, Aubrey. Data visualization. Yes, yes, let me take a sip here. Mm, creative minds. Can you do this in da, Vin da Vinci? I don't know. Um, it seems like you can do a lot of the same stuff in, in Da Vinci as you can in After Effects, but I'm not an expert on that one, so I can't, I don't wanna give you bad advice, but I hope you can, because it's a really useful effect. Okay, let's see what this looks like with a square instead of a circle. So on our second layer, I'm gonna label this square because what do we know above all things? 
we got to stay organized. Square. Now we know when it is. Okay. Uh, on the path, we're going to change this to path. And Oh, that's interesting. Hang on. Let me hide the, the one underneath. What is that? What is that? Okay. Um, let's increase the bands and, and let's change this to, uh, let's change it to something different, maybe a blue. And we'll also take the height down a little bit, increase the bands. Let's make it really thick. So any mask shape that you can create, it's just very simple. Like in audio spectrum, you just want to specify that it is pulling that information and it is sticking it to the path, whatever the path is on that layer. Does that make sense? Um, okay. An album cover now, <laughs> it could be. Okay, cool. All right, so that's the second thing you can do with this. And there's one more way that I wanted to share. And that is you can add this effect to anything. You can add it to an object in your scene. And I am using just a very basic uh, star shape with a shape layer. And how I did this was I, first of all, I created a shape layer. Let me hide this so we can walk through it together. Go up to layer, new shape layer, and under our shape, uh, there it is, star tool. So I'm going to shift on my keyboard, <clears throat> make a star, Let's scoot it over a little bit. This is the ASMR part of this dream. Are you relaxed yet? Okay, we have that. Um, I'm gonna give it a fill. Um, now, my instinct is to make it yellow, but let's let's go against the grain and make it pink. It's a pink star. Okay, I don't want any stroke. Let me remove this. I don't want stroke here. Now. Now what I did differently for this is on my audio flare, which is again, Rick Astley never gonna give you up. All I did was I uh, right click on the audio layer, right click, and then you're gonna go up to keyframe assistant and convert audio to keyframes. Convert audio to keyframes. Now I've already done this, so it might be more useful to just, let me delete that so I can show you exactly what I did. Where are you, Rick Astley? There you are, drag you into my timeline here. And now let me show you. So I'm gonna right click, again, keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. Now what this does, oh, okay. It just, just I don't need this. Well, I might need it for reference, okay. So that creates, that automatically creates a, a, an adjustment layer or a null object in After Effects. And um, if we toggle this arrow, we can see all of these keyframes that it just generated for us, like, like that. It generated the left channel, the right channel, and both channels. And every one of these channels you can, um, do in, you know, creative stuff with. Um, I don't want to isolate this one. I want it to apply to both channels. So I'm just going to delete the left and the right, and we'll just focus on both channels. Um, <clears throat> so we have, if we toggle this, we can see we have our slider. We have all of our keyframe data right in here. If we zoom in, you can see those are all individual keyframes. 
And now we're gonna do something that seems kind of complicated, but it is literally, it's, a, it's an expression, but it's a really simple expression. It's just a little bit of, of text that you have to add here. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into our star layer, pink star, just to stay organized. Um, we'll drop this down. Now, I think I would like to uh, position our anchor point in the center here. I don't know if that's necessary, but I just do it by habit. And we're gonna apply this effect to the scale property. So if you can see in my timeline, this is scale, okay? And now if we were to Alt or Option click on the stopwatch for the scale property, so we'll hit Option on our keyboard, we'll click it, and when we do that, it looks, oh my God, what just happened? That looks really sciency and complicated. Um, if you notice, if you can zoom in here, there's this little icon. It looks like a, a pinwheel. Uh, we're gonna click and drag this pinwheel. We're gonna click and drag it and release, okay? And that has automatically added an expression for us. Let me see, uh, let me close out of these here so we have a little more space to work with. Oh, what happened? Where, where, where did my star go? Where did it go? Was it this one? Oh, here it is, okay, sorry. Okay, so we need a little bit more space here. This is just taken up a little bit. We need to see more of the timeline. So this is our pink star. And if we click where this expression was generated, um, this uh, temp temp is just representing values here. Now, if we were to, if we didn't do anything else, but just pick wick it, pick, pick, whip it, whip it good. So you could, you could do that if you wanted to. You could also add a little bit of text to this script. Um, and I'm gonna add See if I remember, plus, uh, bracket, um, oh, what did I do? I think it was uh, 100 comma 100, close bracket. What does that do? <laughs> Bigger, that's what that does. In addition, if we wanted to have a little bit more control, because sometimes it's just, it's like trying to hit every beat and it's kind of, uh, it's too much, what you can do um, is add one more expression and we're gonna add it to the slider property on this layer. So again, to add an expression, we're gonna option click on slider and that will bring up our expression dialog window, uh, wh whatever they smarter people call it. Um, and we're gonna add this expression. The expression is ease bracket. Um, is it value? Value comma zero, 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 zero. Close it up. Now let me explain what these individual values mean. So these first two are basically um, the range that you want the effect to focus on, is my understanding. And how do you know what range to focus on? Well, you can do that through the graph editor. So if you click on this icon, the graph editor, you can see the highs and the lows. And so it's kind of like a, a cheat sheet in a way. Um, it looks like our, let's see here, it looks like the very bottom, that's at about 14 units. And at the very peak, at the tops, it looks like about 39. 
So maybe we'll say from, what do we say? 14 to 39. Let's see what that gives us. 14, 39, okay. And then the second part of these values um, tells After Effects how big of a, a difference or a change that you want to notice um, when it hits the, this certain threshold. So anything above 14, it's not gonna do anything. Um, anything, ab I think, uh, anything above 39, I don't think it will have an effect. I'm just gonna add, let's say, let's say we wanna go from, zero, what does zero to 100 do? Let me see. <laughs> Okay, what if we made this value also 100? What does that do? Not seeing a, a huge difference there, but here's where you will notice a difference. If we, if we change this value from 14 to, I don't know, let's say, tw let's say 20, we'll get a different result. Okay, my brain didn't really notice that difference. But if you play with these values, then you can sort of get a more refined effect in terms of where it's kind of hitting and how intense the change is. That's the best way that I know how to describe it. Oh, what is this error? Why, why, is, it, why is it giving me an er error? Did I close everything up? I don't know. What if I back to zero? Does that, oh, okay. All okay, right, 100, 100, it doesn't like that, but what does this do? Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, all right, let me see if I can answer uh, technical questions here. Uh, Digby, in my head, it's green screened skeletons dancing. <laughs> if you had a little skeleton character, you could probably do something there. Yeah. Yes, exactly, Aubrey. It's like looking at a, a speaker vibrate. Doing my part, <laughs> buddy Sky. Turn the TV up, too. Oh, Digby. Um, yeah, I mean, there are, I mean, there's frequencies I don't think I really pick up on very well either. Um, but the, if you're looking at this in terms of like the normal, uh, range of hearing for like the average person, I think anything below 20, uh, you don't really hear, but you do feel. So it does, if you're making music, it, do, it can make a difference, but in terms of the animation of this, um, again, I think that, uh, where's my cheat sheet? Where'd I put it? Cheat sheet, back to the top. Uh, take this off for a second here. So I like to focus on this um, because there just seems to be a lot more energy in the bass. So I, I just feel like it gives it a little bit more impact. But if you play around with these values for all of these, um, you can get some really interesting results. Um, this is my favorite. Everybody enjoy just for a minute while I sit my feet. You know, what if we extended this? I just want to hear the singing part because we will get a different result with that. 
Um, let's set this to four minutes and just extend all of this and see. <laughs> let's see what it looks like. Now, where does he start singing? Can we tell? Um, where are you at? Gotta make you understand. There it is right there. Okay, so let's see what it looks like from here with Rick singing. So whatever whatever track you're you're working with, you'll get different results. Um, this is what works on a Rick Astley song. If anybody was curious, but you can choose uh, anything you like. If you're into if you're into uh, um, what am I thinking? Um, electronic music like e EDM kind of stuff. There's a lot of bass and there's a lot of action going on. I think this works really well for that. Um, and it, it also works really well, like if you're a podcaster and you're uploading your video to YouTube, well, to make it a little more visual, you could have just a straight line that represents a frequency of somebody's voice. And that's more interesting to look at and to listen to, in my opinion. So um, if you can master this in After Effects, this is a very, very useful tool. And that concludes the lesson. Now, let's see, I'm gonna go, let's see, let me switch back over here. Uh, how do I go back to full screen? Full screen? There we go, okay. So, guys, uh, let me scroll up. I know I've missed some stuff here. A few people with hearing problems. Um, I'm, I'm right there with you. St. Croc, in all sincerity, thanks for this. I've always wondered how visualizers were created. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad you got something out of this. Like, I've seen some, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, this kind of stuff on YouTube, and it really does look complicated, but it's really not. I mean, if you just understand, um, I don't know, how, how to click a few buttons, it, it's not difficult. It looks kind of, it looks kind of difficult, but it's really not. Uh, okay, Morgan, Digby, I find the older I get, the less impressive the stories behind my injuries are. I just tell everyone it's a bear attack, even if I try it. <laughs> oh boy. You, you get hurt, when, you get hurt when you trip? Yeah, I do too. Um, I, I, I fall up the stairs, I bump into table corners, um, I get weird scratches on my body, which is odd because I have no nails. I can very much relate to that. <laughs> Bling Auntie, thank you so much. <laughs> Bling Auntie, I was uh, kind of passively listening to your episode on uh, people trying to recreate your website and scamming your customers. I was, I mean, as a Shopify e-commerce owner of a website, I found that enlightening and a little scary. Um, but I, I love your, I just love your wit. You're very fun to listen to. Morgan, what are you doing? Just to brag on Amy for a second. She's also really good at breaking down complicated things. She's very patient with the learning and teaching. Oh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I try to explain in a way that like would be easy for me to understand if I had absolutely no prior knowledge to this stuff. 
I don't think the barrier of entry is really that crazy if you if you can if you're willing to pay like a monthly subscription for this kind of program I know it looks overwhelming but um, you just need to you don't need to know every little thing that everything does you just need to know a few things Go for my bike late at night. Woke up in the hospital with oh man, you guys. I'm I'm really going to enjoy uh, rewatching this chat. Um, seems like a lot of people getting hurt. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I'm trying to do that every day. Going through my back catalog, and um, uh, so far so good. I think I figured out. A couple new things recently with shorts um, I was previously titling a lot of stuff with with that was very um, very specific to what I was doing like just making a statement about something but then I realized that's not what people click on people click on emotional triggers so now it's like I gotta lean a little bit into the clickbait but it really is about like, would I click on that? Well, you have to be curious enough to know the answer to something. There's like people that are, are good, that have mastered the art of titling. Uh, they, they, that's uh that's the, that's a secret. Um, okay, principles of teaching go from simple to complex, known to unknown. That's right, Aubrey. Start small, and then the big stuff is just a lot of stacking of the small stuff. That, that's probably true for any, uh, any job, really. Oh, same, same, <laughs> Blaine Anti, same. I'm going to watch more of your videos just to uh, live through vicariously, not in a good way, but just to be aware. That's good. That's good stuff to know. Oh, Jonathan, do you work EMS? So you're saying this was not the most painful thing you've seen today. <laughs> go with, oh, Goo Troop, go with our Aquardians. That is my that is my inclin inclination, my, um, I don't know, it's what I immediately gravitate towards, but uh, it did not rank as the majority in my poll. So I'm going to stick with Aquanauts, unless there's a major uproar of people telling me I shouldn't. Luis, as a person that doesn't even know what to do, after downloading an editing program, I find your lesson quite simple to follow. That's great to hear. Yeah, first step, you gotta download the editing. Yes. <laughs> DB, okay, Team Accordion. <laughs> oh, that's a good question, Liam. Okay, who here right now voted for aquanauts i want to know i'm waiting what time we got wow this flew by <clears throat> aquanauts anybody okay classic classics lover uh, Classics Lover did, okay. We got two people. <laughs> Where's the option for those who don't remember and like both? Oh, well, maybe I can just switch it up. So everybody feels included. Uh, positivity, nope. Nope to what? Nope to aquano aquanauts? <laughs> uh, 
I'm your Bella. Oh, thanks for the reminder to do another Kristen Stewart video. I'm working on it. Just lean into being flustered all the time. It's my natural state. Aqua. Yeah, mythogenesis. Yeah, I know what you mean. People do associate it with water. Yes on yes on aquanauts. Okay, well that was that was the one that won out eventually, uh, like at the end of the poll. So I don't know. Maybe I will just switch between the two. <laughs> Awkward enough to not remember. <laughs> Oh, Aki Takis. I love Aki Takis. Um, I love Aki Takis. I feel like if we do a live stream, maybe this will be next week. Maybe next week it won't be a lesson, just like a catch up chat kind of thing. Those are what I think Aki Takis make sense for because we are awkward and talking. I don't know. <laughs> Another Twilight reference. Okay. Yeah, right now. Okay, so it was just a live stream for the first like 40 minutes. It has now become an Aki Talkie. That's exactly what this is right now. Amy's ad Admirable Admirers. AAA, triple A. Maybe. I'm not going to call it that. Because <laughs> then I have to be like, welcome, Amy's adorable admirers. I don't know. I feel weird saying that. All right, guys. Well, um, I think I'm going to wrap up here. This always goes by so, so fast. But um, I hope that this lesson made some sense and I will go back and I will add chapters because I know some people they just want to get right in um they don't want to listen to me warm up for 10 minutes and uh be awkward so um thank you so much for joining me tonight and um Hope you're enjoying the shorts. I'm working on other stuff right now, but in the meantime, I hope I can give you a little something every day. Um, and you guys are great. Thank you. Thank you for joining me every week. Um, I appreciate you. And uh, until next time. Awkward. And out.